I'm glad I had a strong man. <laughs> <laughs> you say my best breath smells. No, mine does. It's no. really bad. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't smelled it yet. Um, so I'm John Alsop and you are? Nicholas Ezan Franklin. And uh, you're a hairdresser and uh, an artist. Yeah, I'm studying my BA's honours degree in fine art here at Westwood. Mm-hmm. And it's my last year. And this Friday's the final It the is final indeed. Show. And I've told everyone to come at six o'clock and it's seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't trump it, it was the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, what happened? So, is this the final thing that this Friday is your last? That is it. Completely finished. Out into the world of art and everything. And so, what what do you plan to do afterwards? Um, with my hairdressing salon, mm-hmm. I want to earn a lot of money. Obviously, <laughs> no, I don't want to be rich. I never have done. Um, I'm going to turn it more into a little art salon. Right. Um, I've got quite a lot of local people coming to the salon because they see pictures on the wall. Mm-hmm. And I'm really up for sort of showing art to a public that would normally not see it. You like putting art in a place that you wouldn't expect mm. to see art. Mm. And it works quite well. And I can put on a few little exhibitions for different people. And so does this mean you've really got good. the smallest art gallery in Scarborough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> we can manage to get in my salon when I had a coffee morning for funds for this degree show. Yeah. The most we got was 13 people and a dog. And that was really cramped. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we did it. How big was the dog? It was a little tiny fluffy dougal like uh-huh. dog. That's, right. That's cool. <laughs> he didn't get hurt. Okay. <laughs> so tell me about the exhibition. What what are you? What In are this you exhibition, showing? I'm showing a work called 2012. It's um, 2012 rolled up balls of human hair. So tell me about this work then. What's going on? Um, on this work, it is 2012. Balls of human hair. I know. Um, the reason I've done it is because I wanted to portray mankind in the year 2012 where it is allegedly going to be the end of the world. Um, so each one of the little balls represents a person or people or a mankind, children, any different thing you want to believe. I want it to be a world where everybody's sort of not segregated in little groups. I want everybody to mingle and get on and be happy and friendly. But so the reason, these, these are balls of human hair? Yeah, um, I haven't got one to actually take off the wall and show you, but I don't know if you can see some of them, you can really see it. And you said they smell as well. I'm going to have a sniff. <laughs> some of them that have been... Smell. There's a few that were left too long <laughs> in PVA glue that really smell. <laughs> You'd have to sniff that one, go on. Sniff that one, one right. <laughs> <laughs> I left them at the top so they wouldn't scare people. <laughs> Those are the last ones to be done when I was rushing, like, how many have I got done? Counting them and trying to pick them up and put them on. So was the, it wasn't inspired by the elephant poo man? No, it wasn't. My true honest, because yeah. I know there's so much, like, talking at circles of how to be pretentious and things, and I'm very mm-hmm. down-to-earth and very not pretentious. The whole meaning behind this, my personal meaning is, my grandma was born in 1912, a month before the Titanic sank and she would have been 100 years old next year. And when I was a little kid, she used to tell me that when she was younger, to have nice silky hair, what she used to do was have to brush her hair 100 times each night. So in a way, it's sort of a homage to my grandma because she really helped me get into hairdressing, which is my other love in life. She would have been 100 next year. And even when she was dying at home, I used to have a bin bag round her shoulders and wash her hair and perm it and make sure that she was really nice and everything. So each one of these little things if it's a large one or even a little tiny one, they've all been rolled in my hands a hundred times to represent each time she had to brush her hair. Right. And they actually have all been rolled a hundred times because my hands are killing. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> so yeah, it is a bit of a homage to my grandma and she would be a hundred. I've not even got a piece of my granny's hair. Right. It sort of links in with my other work, which is the immortality hair pieces right. Right. that I've done. Very cool. <laughs> Are they really 2000? It doesn't look like 2000. There is actually 2012, unless someone's been in here before I gave them up and stole some. I don't know why anybody would like hair, but, um, you know. It's also nice as well, because each one of these, some of them I can actually recognise from the person whose hair I cut. I was going to say, these are clippings from the hair studio. People donated it all to me, yeah. So you've probably got like an elderly lady that would look strangely at punk rockers, and for example, her hair's this colour now. Right. Oh, that's my cousin, Susan. 
<laughs> These ones are actually me, and if you touch them, they're completely different because I've not glued myself. Right. So there's 12 of me in there, and there's another one that I can recognise. So are they, did you dye the hairs afterwards, or...? Yeah. Right. What I did was so uh, these I are not the hair um, and just coloured it. Some of this them... isn't representative of your output from the studio. You're not sending people out in all kinds of different... I mean, I know you do colour well, but... <laughs> but <laughs> if we no, look at this, it's um, not. Uh, no, it's we're not, not going to see multicolored. Some of them actually are. Some of them are. Um, where, where is it? These ones mm -hmm. are actually the colour the person was. Right. The red ones and some of the blue ones were. Uh -huh. cool. So yes, yeah, some of them are actually just the person themselves. Excellent. But it's good just to colour them and rechange them and that because I yeah. can tell whose the hair is and still, which is quite geeky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, hair so well that I can tell whose hair it is. Kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't it, don't insisted on having sculptures made. Right. So that was quite nice. I've got a bit of a brief of some people when they have the haircut. But yeah, it was really nice because if you just think one strand of that, when you wear your hair, it, one strand of it tells mm. who you are, what you are, what you've done, what you eat, your history, your background, your yes. heritage, yes. and it's all there to be collected. So. If it was the end of the world in 2012, Mr. Alien could come down, roll it up, take it off, and there's a whole human race again. Cool. Is there anything <laughs> else? Uh, is there anything else you're showing? Um, my immortality, which mm -hmm. also follows on from what I was saying about mm -hmm. the hair and mm -hmm. my grandma. Uh, it's little bottles where I'm preserving people's hair, like my own, or maybe a pet's or a friend's or someone close. Pop it in a little bottle and immortalise them. Mm -hmm. It looks really pretty, mm -hmm. and it's just that random idea I thought of when I was thinking. Hmm, I need to fill a wall. <laughs> what am I going to do? Because <laughs> 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 it has been so stressful, because I took on a business during a recession mm -hmm. and started it. I've had 15 clients, and now my furthest traveller customer comes from Egypt. <laughs> so that's kind of good. It's kind of good. <laughs> but it's been really hard and really busy, and try to juggle everything that am I, I do. Am I right? I don't know whether this is appropriate or not. Are, are, are you a single mother? I am a single mum, oh, yes. Right. So how, how many, I'm evil. Uh, how, I'm how, how many, of Satan. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many kiddies are you, uh, are you supporting in all of this? One. Right. He's 21, so he should be oh, well. supporting me soon. He should be, definitely. Writing. <laughs> fair, fair you need to get him in a wardrobe. He's an author. Yeah. That would be a good one. Okay. <laughs> You should have actually brought your wardrobe because chewing gum table's a little bit... Oh. It's very hot under here as well. It is as well. Um, um, I might sit on the glue gun, am I? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, might never, you might never leave. The glue to the floor, part of my exhibit. <laughs> so after the... So, so you get a, a degree in art yeah, and, and then you're going to run the, the hair... The hair I studio. am, yeah. What, what's it, is it called the hair studio? No, it's what's called, called? Nikki's Salon. Nikki's Salon. Um, there you go. I love it's it. Original. <laughs> Do I know? I mean, I mean you know. <laughs> it says what it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's nice because I've had such a lot of people from the local community popping in. And it's nice because it's not just a hairdresser's or an art gallery, it's somewhere where people can come and chill and talk and just look at the pictures on the wall. Or, and it, it and does. It's just, and people then see someone in that they know. Hmm. And then they come in and talk as well, which is lovely because there's people now in the old town that are talking that haven't had a chance to talk to each other for years. And like, oh, I haven't seen you in years. I just popped in to say hello. And it's really nice. I love it. And I, it's I really friendly, buzzy that. sort of feeling to it. Excellent. <laughs> and it's nice to show art to a public that wouldn't normally see art. Yes. And then people are in for a couple of hours getting the hair coloured and you can talk about art, talk about the artist. And it's a nice conversation, and people are getting interested in arts in Scarborough now with that. Mm, definitely. So I'm quite proud of being able to do that. <laughs> and are, are you uh, are you a colour specialist? If someone wanted wild colouring, are, are you the person to come to? Definitely. I oh yes, I get so. very very artistic with art. A, a year ago, I joked actually, said I would look for people with long hair and then paint pictures on the back of the hair. Oh wow. I just didn't bother with the long hair and just did it and stuck it on the wall in my little balls. <laughs> and what was that? Um, there was something on your Facebook page that was to do with... Uh, it was um, an outfit, clothes, wasn't it? Like, it wasn't, that what was going to be part of my show. We'd got a whole dance performance and everything done. Right. And the little young... Well, the young lady, Kaylee had choreographed it. My son was going to be dancing in it. But unfortunately... I couldn't use the music because Universal Music Group wanted two hundred pounds off me. Right. To because we mixed some music. I got Justin Larson, who's an American producer, who's worked with quite some big names, right. and he mixed his piece of music, which now was never going to be heard. 
Well, those, got those it. costumes and things that you were doing there they were, were, were they were quite Yeah, they're not even going to be marked for my show now. So it's depressing, I that, know. That is depressing. There's a tiny little clip of the costumes on the film that's going to be on my presentation here. But... But you can see them if you go to, is it Nicola Franklin Hair on as a, f a page on Facebook? Is yeah, it Nicola Franklin Hair on Facebook and I've got yeah. millions of photographs of hairballs and different things on there. <laughs>